the Dallas Cowboys. No D in Dallas is what I like to say coming out of last night's game, or yesterday's game, I should say. As for the really the third straight game, the Dallas defense gets embarrassed, gets shredded, puts up historically bad numbers, and they lose yet again, this time at home, to the Browns. 49-38 to is now Dallas. For all the hype that I had coming into the season, shocker, I know, for all the expectations we had and all really the attention paid to Mike McCarthy, to Dak Prescott, to the receiving core, to Ezekiel Elliott. One area wasn't really looked at too deeply. One area wasn't really discussed too in depth. And that's also on me. I will absolutely take the blame. I did not really, when I was talking about the Cowboys, when I predicted them to win the NFC East, I mean, not really going out on a limb there, to be honest, but you just look at the roster on offense. They draft C.D. Lamb in the first round. So, all right, who's going to stop this offense? And the answer is, you know who's stopping the Dallas Cowboys offense right now? It's themselves. It's the Dallas Cowboys defense because it's been so bad. It has been horrific. Like I said, now they drop to one and three. And now if you're the Cowboys, despite the fact that the NFC East is one of the worst divisions maybe we'll ever see in NFL history, despite the fact that the one, two, and one Eagles are now sitting up top first place in the NFC East, should there be a legitimate concern? How concerned are you with the Dallas Cowboys? Because for me, the concerns are very high. The concerns are very, very, very high. And it's weird, checking on social media, and maybe this isn't the best barometer. Maybe this is my fault, maybe taking too much stock in what people say on Twitter. But that is where a lot of instant reaction is allowed for. That is where you can kind of get the opinion of a lot of fans that are fans of the Cowboys that obviously you're not friends with. Like for me, I don't really have many Cowboys friends. So it's tough for me to get a pulse uh, of the nation, sort of say, of, or, or how the Cowboys are feeling. But Twitter allows for that. So maybe this is me putting too much stock in Twitter and what people are saying in the spur of the moment with emotions very high. But there's a lot of people blaming Mike McCarthy for the offense being too similar to what it was under Jason Garrett. Faulting the offense, not wanting to pay Dak Prescott the big contract. The offense isn't the issue in Dallas. Now, I know that's not a, a crazy takeaway. I want to get more into the defense, but I just want to put that out there. Mike McCarthy has gotten some blame already. The offense is not the problem. Their defense, by far and away, is preventing the, the Cowboys from being anywhere close to what they should be. And they are one miracle onside kick away from looking 0-4 right in the face. All because of their defense. This is legitimately. We talk about the Jets being one of the worst teams in football, the Giants being one of the worst teams in football. This Cowboys defense is one of the worst units, overall units, in all football. They are setting records and not of the good kind. Yesterday, first time since 1960, which happened to be the first year that organization, the Dallas Cowboys, was created. So, for, so it's the first time the Cowboys created a team. They've allowed 38-plus points in three consecutive games. Not breaking any barriers here, but that is tough to win. When your defense, night in and night out, three weeks in a row now, is just basically the easy pass for offenses. Come right through. Pass on through. The end zone, oh, we'll, we'll escort you right in, right in here. Now, the, the Cowboys aren't the only team with defensive issues. The Seahawks, their defense is getting shredded. And they held the Dolphins in check, but their defense got shredded by the Cowboys last week. They got shredded by Cam Newton and the Patriots a few weeks ago on Sunday Night Football. The Saints, same thing. The Raiders went up and down them. The Packers and Aaron Rodgers with Alan Lazard went up and down the Saints. So it's, the Cowboys aren't alone in their defensive issues. But here's why it's extremely concerning. Here's why it's very alarming if you're a Cowboys fan about how bad the defense has been so far. They are struggling to stop literally anything. Anything you want to throw at the Cowboys defense, they can't stop. You want to try to run the ball? They can't stop the run. Yesterday, the Cleveland Browns rushed for 307 yards. 307, not 30.7, not 3.07 yards per carry, 307 yards as a team they ran for yesterday. And while, yes, the Browns are one of the better running teams, they emphasize the run, and they have a great one-two punch in Kareem Hunt, or I should say, really, in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Are they probably the best dynamic or one-two punch in the NFL in terms of running backs? So, sure, the, the, the Browns will get theirs. But here's, here's, the, here's the issue. It wasn't their one-two punch that hurt the Cowboys yesterday. Nick Chubb ran the ball six times. Kareem Hunt had a nice day, had two touchdowns. He wasn't exactly thrashing this Cowboys defense. 
Do you know who the leading rusher was for the Browns yesterday? Dearnest Johnson. If anyone can tell me if you even knew this person was alive, this is a real person on a roster, please raise your hand. I've never heard of Dearness Johnson before. Yet he was the leading rusher for the Browns. The second leading rusher for the Browns. Not a running back. Odell Beckham Jr. So the Cowboys are giving up rushing yards to literally anyone who had the ball. If they put me or you in that Browns backfield, we probably could have rushed for 50 to 75 yards and probably get a rushing touchdown. They were getting gashed left and right. And the worst part was, the offense battles back again, down 41-14 in the fourth quarter. They score a ton of points. Make it, make it really interesting to the point where it's a three-point game. Now I'm thinking, oh, no, not again, not the Browns. Don't be like the Falcons. And what happened? The Browns played to their strength. They kept running the ball a 50-yard end around Odell Beckham Jr. Cowboys defense fell asleep, couldn't tackle him, touchdown, game over. A 50-yard end around. Just when things are finally turning around for you, you're getting a few stops in the fourth quarter. The offense has momentum, and you allow an end around to a wide receiver to end the game. They couldn't tap a nosebleed if, they, if their life depended on it. So they can't stop the run. Again, 307 yards from the Browns yesterday. They struggle with stopping the run. They can't stop the pass in that improbable miracle way. Again, one onside kick, one watermelon onside kick away from being 0-4. Matt Ryan in that game for the Falcons, four touchdown passes. Last week, Russell Wilson, 317 yards, five touchdown passes, and really had six if DK Metcalf doesn't start showboating if the ball punched out the one-yard line. That was one of the best throws Russell Wilson will ever make in his career. Gorgeous. And again, it ends at the one-yard line. That should have been another touchdown pass. So if you can't stop the run, if you can't stop the pass, and by the way, the Browns, you knew they run the ball. The Browns have been ground and pound since Kevin Stefanski got there. Their, their offensive goal is to establish the run. So that's not surprising. That's not like the Chiefs all of a sudden committing to the run one game and you were unprepared for it. The Falcons, the Seahawks, you know they're one-dimensional in terms of throwing the ball. That's how they win. So three games in a row now, the Cowboys defense knew what to expect, knew what was coming, and couldn't stop it. Could not stop it. And here's why there's another concern. Help isn't on the way. There's not much reinforcements coming down the road here to shore up this defense. They will get Leighton Van Der Esch back. He has a broken collarbone, missed about half the year. So he's still another four or five weeks away, depending on how he heals. So yes, that will be a big help in the middle. But other than that, there, there's nothing coming. In the secondary, that's where you're getting torched. There's no help coming. Jalen Smith, God help him. He hasn't been able to really carry the load. Mike Nolan coming in as D.C., has no answers so far. Defensive line actually has, a, has some depth on it. No help. This Dallas defense is so bad. Is so, so, so bad. They are helping and propping up Dak Prescott to set record passing numbers. Yet they're still, again, 1-3. and three. Dak Prescott threw four games so far. And again, I understand these numbers are inflated. When you're down 41-14 in the fourth quarter yesterday... When you're down, again, three, uh, three scores against the Falcons. If you're constantly down and you need to throw the ball against the Seahawks, I understand your passing numbers are going to be up and your, your run-to-pass differential is going to be favoring the pass. So take that with what you will. But on top of that, with that said, Dak Prescott through four games so far has passed for 1,690 yards. That is an NFL record through four games, period. No quarterback in NFL history has ever thrown for that many yards. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, Joe Montana, the list goes on and on. No quarterback has ever done it. Now, again, we are a quarter of the way through the season, so there's still a long way to go. But Dak Prescott is on pace, on pace to throw for 6,760 yards. Would obliterate Peyton Manning's current record so far, 5,400 yards. He surpassed by almost 1,300 yards. Now, again, we always see some crazy paces early in the season that obviously come back to the mean. The Cowboys, they will play some bad teams, get some leads, and run the ball more. So I don't expect Dak Prescott to come really anywhere close to Peyton Manning's 5,400-yard record. But with that said, 
Dak is accumulating all these yards, throwing these touchdown passes, and they still can't win the games. Their defense is so bad that despite these record numbers, they're still not even able to put their team in a position to win. And you give 41 points in the first three quarters, you were giving your shot, your team no chance to win. Now, to be fair to the Dallas defense, the offense hasn't put them in, in some spots either. The Falcons there throwing the ball left and right. Seattle Dak had a few turnovers. Yesterday they had a few turnovers, some more fumbles coming back to hurt them. The offense isn't helping out the Cowboys defense. Don't get me wrong. But the defense is doing themselves zero favors. Zero, zero, zero favors. So if we talk about this regression, like I just talked about Dak Prescott, well, I don't think it really, I'm sure no one really thinks that he will throw for 6,760 yards like he's on pace to do right now. So what happens if he comes back to earth? What happens if this Cowboys offense slows down just a little bit? Not a total regression, not a total slowdown, but just doesn't keep up this record-setting pace. Can this defense bail them out? No. Hell no. They still have a game against the Cardinals, who can score. The Steelers, with an amazing all-world defense, one of the best defenses in the NFL. The Ravens, who can stop you and score on you. They still have to play the Eagles twice. You even look now with the way this defense has played. Games like the Bengals with Joe Burrow and how he's played so far through four games. The Vikings, what they have on, uh, on offense, at least potential-wise, those games are dicey now. That's why you having more talent than the Bengals. You have more talent than the Vikings. Those games are far from must-wins. So if you lose to the Cardinals, which I think is a probability, not out of the question, you lose to the Steelers, which is likely, you lose to the Ravens, likely, you even spill with the Eagles, you're looking at another four, five, six losses down the pike coming here soon. And that's just winning these 50-50 games. So I'm legitimately concerned about the Cowboys. And I'm talking about legitimately concerned even to get this division. They still have the highest side, despite being 1-3, and three, to win the NFC East. That's how bad the, the division has been. But you know what? I said this a few weeks ago when talking about the Cowboys. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Last year, I kept buying into the Cowboys. I did. I kept making excuses for Dak. Now, I'm not a big Dak supporter. I'm not a big Dak advocate. But I thought there was a lot of unfair criticism. I thought Jason Garrett and the way the offense was coached was really limiting their ability. I kept saying they'll, they'll make the playoffs. They have too much talent. The Eagles, basically everyone except Carson Wentz is hurt. They'll win the division. And what happened? As we got to late November, as we got to December, the Cowboys never turned it around. They always played small. They always fell short against the better team that they've been playing. So fool me once. Shame on you, Cowboys. You got me. I'm not getting fooled again. I see the way so far the Cowboys are playing at 1-3. and three. I don't care how bad this division is. They're in real, real, real trouble to lose it again. Because we counted off the Eagles last year with their injuries, and they won the division. We're counting off the Eagles again because of their injuries, because of the way Carson Wentz has played so far. I'm not counting off the Eagles. I have legitimate doubts and worries that if the Cowboys go into Philly, or even Eagles come to them, they'll lose that game. Because they perpetually fall short in the big moment, and now their defense is not even giving them a chance. Not even giving them a prayer to win. Dak is shattering the record books, and they are still 1-3. and three. Russell Wilson is shattering the record books so far. He looks like by far and away the runaway MVP candidate. You know what the Seahawks are? 4-0. Oh. Their defense has been brutal this year. It's been getting gashed, but you know what they do? They win. They got that big goal line stand against Cam Newton back in Week 2 on Sunday night to win the game, despite the fact that Cam Newton went up and down the field at will. They got a big interception of Dak in the end zone to seal that game last week. Bad defenses can be bad, but make a play when it counts. The Cowboys have a bad defense, and they only hurt their offense when it matters in the moment. So there's legitimate concern, not just for the Cowboys, you know, once they make the playoffs. There's legitimate concern for the Cowboys to make the playoffs. This is a one team, this is a one playoff bid uh, division. The winner is getting in and no one else. And right now, I have legitimate concerns that they could even get to win the division, despite the fact that the leader right now is 1-2-1. and one. Despite the fact that of their horrendous start, they're still right there with a chance to win it. I'm not buying the Cowboys. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not getting fooled again. 